the ticket home. Don't, uh, don't, well, <laughs> cut that part, okay? All right. Okay, so um, <clears throat> time to talk about pressure. Pressure, you, you know what pressure is. Pressure is, that's pressure. You apply a force over a certain area. So pressure, given by a P, pressure is given by a P. Pressure is force per unit area, force over area. I can apply 20 pounds of force over this whole surface. <laughs> or I can apply 24, 20 pounds of force over this tiny surface, and it's going to make a bigger dent. I can push down hard with my entire hand, or I can push with the same force on a nail, and I can drive the nail through material. Because the area is smaller, so with the same force, I've got a smaller area, and the pressure goes way up. I weigh 200 pounds, and if I stepped on you with these qualified lab shoes, it might not hurt so much. But what about a woman that stands on your, stands on your foot, and she's got those little tiny quarter-inch by quarter-inch heels? She may have half the weight that I do, but she's going to have many, many times smaller area, and so the pressure goes way up. Be like driving a nail through your foot. Ow. So the units of pressure, force over area. That's the units of force over area. In English, that's going to be pounds per square inch, uh, pounds. That's also known as PSI, right? Maybe I should write that down so you got it. equals PSI pounds per square foot, which is also known as PSF. And uh, in metric units, it's newtons per meter squared. That's also called a Pascal, given by big P little a, named after a guy named Blaise Pascal. Pascal. And you don't see this very much around here, but if, if you look on most tires, they tell you what to inflate them to, and they tell you how many PSI or how many kPa. And a kPa is a kilopascal. There are about a, there are 14.7 PSI in one atmosphere of pressure, or 100,000 pascals. Now, what do I mean by an atmosphere of pressure? I mean that there is an entire atmosphere full of gas pushing down on us all the time. It goes up to like 60 miles altitude. It gets thinner as it goes. But these molecules, they have weight, and they're all pushing down. Not just down, they're in all directions. Unlike force, pressure is not a scalar. It's not a, it's not a vector. It's a scalar. It acts in all directions. So I've got 14.7 pounds per square inch. We're about sea level pushing down on me here to the atmosphere, but it's also pushing here and here and here and here and here and, well, everywhere. Same, so it's all squeezing me down, okay? So the pressure to the atmosphere, that's called absolute pressure. It's the atmospheric pressure, pressure plus whatever else we've got. Well, let's look at this. Absolute pressure, P abs, is equal to atmospheric pressure the pressure of the atmosphere, plus what we call the gauge pressure. If you're filling up your tire, and you, it tells you to fill it up to 30 PSI, well, they're not saying 30 PSI absolute. They're saying you need to fill that tire up 30 PSI above the atmospheric pressure. Because if your tire's atmospheric pressure, that's flat. And for the gauge pressure, that would be zero PSI when your tire's flat. In reality, inside there, you've got, still got 14.7 PSI of atmospheric pressure. So gauge pressure is the value of the uh, pressure above that of the atmosphere. And absolute pressure is when you take it all into account. If my tire's got 30 PSI in it, that's gauge pressure. And often they use uh, PSIG for gauge. But if it's, PS, if it's 30 PSI gauge, then absolute pressure is 30 plus 14.7. 44.7 PSI, absolute, or quite often they call it PSIA. So gauge pressure here is also known 
by the term delta P because it's a pressure difference. And let's try to look at that. This pressure difference. Pressure difference is due to a couple of factors. What? The air's got a certain amount of density to it. So the denser the air, well, the more pressure on you. It's due to the gravitational pull. The more gravity's pulling down, the harder the air's pushing down, and the more pressure's on you. And it's also due to the height of the air. The higher the volume of air, the more air there is pushing down on you. If you got one, if you got one mattress on top of you, it's a lot less pressure than if you got two mattresses on top of you. As the height increases, so does the pressure. Now, in English units, mass density times gravity, well, it's weight density. And in English units, we generally talk about weight density. So the pressure difference in English units is just the weight density times the height. Well, we'll do an example of this. Let's, uh, let me show you. Let's use water instead. Now, here's Jordy. I let him up for a minute, and he's uh, got his breath, and he's come back down again. Now, he's underwater. And the pressure of the water is pushing down on him. And you've felt this before. If you swim to the bottom of a pool, you can feel your ears pushing, because what's happened is the pressure on the outside is greater than the pressure on the inside, and they're pushing in on the membrane, the tympanic membrane of your ear, due to that pressure difference, that delta P. By the way, that triangle, delta, means change in. So, Jordy's got pressure. He's got pressure due to the atmosphere. And now he's got pressure due to the water. And we usually talk about, we usually use water because it, the density doesn't change so much with depth. Water and air, gases and liquids, are both fluids. This is just an easier fluid to calculate with. So, Jordy's pressure isn't just due to the air. It's due to the height of the water that he's sitting in. The deeper he goes, the more pressure he feels. In clear water, you gain an atmosphere of pressure uh, about every, for fresh water, about every 34 feet of depth. So let's make up a problem.